Hi everyone. Thank you for joining me. It's been a while. I appreciate you spending this time with me. So the topic of the blog for this week is something that I think all of us are really interested in. I know that I am. And it's the afterlife. So the title of this week's blog is called Proof of the Afterlife. Now, as, as mortal human beings with a finite amount of time in the material world during any particular lifetime, we often ponder these questions. What happens to us after our physical body dies? Do we indeed continue to live on or do we cease to be? Most, if not all, religions or spiritual teachings believe that the consciousness that we all are does continue on after physical death. All biological forms eventually run out of chi or energy and may get sick or simply die of natural causes. The soul, most of us believe, will continue to exist somewhere in some other realm or dimension. When we lose someone we love to physical death, the important question, the important answers that we want to know are where are they? And are they okay? So to answer these questions, we need to communicate with them. Spirit mediums are people who can directly and consistently connect and communicate with the afterlife and the souls who reside there. I've studied afterlife communication for the past 30 plus years. And I've read many books, as I've mentioned before, by some of the best spirit mediums like John Edward, George Anderson, James Vaughn Prague, Laura Lynn Jackson, Tyler Henry, and Mark Anthony, among many more. I've had my own experiences with connecting and communicating with the afterlife, but I am not a spirit medium. If you ask any of the people referred to above, most will tell you that mediums are born, not made. They will also tell you that being born with this gift is both a blessing and an extreme challenge at times. That said, we can all learn to open up to the afterlife energies or frequencies and learn how to effectively communicate with our loved ones who have crossed and receive guidance and signs for them as well, from sign, signs from them as well. The purpose of this blog is to talk about not only how we can make that connection, but also about how the information, understanding, and proof of the afterlife has changed from being simply spiritual and faith-based to being proven by present-day science. In 2016, my husband and I went to Florida to visit my mom and a few of my siblings, and we rented a house on the ocean in Melbourne, where my mom lived. While we were driving to her house, we passed a little shop in in the Atlantic, Florida, called Aquarian Dreams. I knew by the name, it must be a holistic or a spiritual shop, so we stopped to check it out. While we were there, we learned that Mark Anthony, a spirit medium and author of a couple of my favorite books on the afterlife, frequented the store. We were told that he would be there the following day. So we came back, and indeed, he did come in. And we had a very warm and wonderful discussion. Not only is he a brilliant writer, truly brilliant, a really great orator and an incredible spot on medium, but he's approachable. He's kind and really delightful. I was truly impressed and a bit starstruck as well, I might add. So, the reason for my bringing that up is because I am just, I just finished listening to his latest book called The Afterlife Frequency. When I tell you it is mind blowing and so incredibly relevant to today in the 21st century, I think it's an understatement. Some refer to Mark as a psychic lawyer, though he does not practice law anymore. He does have a law degree. He's extremely intelligent, and his new book, The Afterlife Frequency, he explains how science 
has finally been able to explain why afterlife communication is possible and how we are all connected to each other. Much of what he talks about, I understood before on a purely intuitive level, but was never able to understand it from a scientific perspective. I have a hard time deciphering scientific principles. My brain doesn't quite get there. But Mark makes complicated concepts easy to understand, and he, he bridges the gap between the golden age of spiritism and modern day science. I would recommend to you all that you get a copy of his book. You will not be disappointed. I will refer to some of his information contained therein, but I'm sure his words and the way that he teaches will be far more complete and understandable. So he tells us that the golden age of spiritism took place between the mid 1800s to around the 1930s, mid 1930s. During that time, mediums were becoming very popular, but there was a great divide between spiritism and science. And that went on for a really long time. But now today, Mark has shown us how modern science can now explain how we know for sure that our soul, which he calls the electromagnetic soul, I love the term, the electromagnetic soul, how it continues on after physical death. He also goes on to explain how he uses the afterlife frequency to successfully achieve interdimensional communication. He also teaches that on a subatomic level, everything is made of electromagnetic energy. All religions have taught us that we're all connected to each other. We are one, but never fully explained why that is scientifically. Through Albert Einstein, of course, we learn that energy cannot be created or destroyed, but it can only be changed from one form to another. Therefore, the electromagnetic consciousness, the energetic consciousness that we are, which is our electromagnetic soul, cannot be destroyed. It simply changes form or frequency when our body dies. Subsequently, if everything is made of electromagnetic energy, then it follows that we indeed are all connected to each other. The frequency of the afterlife is different than the frequency and density of the earth plane. When we exit our body after physical death, we enter the ocean of mass consciousness. It's not actually an ocean, but it's an energetic ocean. This doesn't mean that we lose our individuality, we don't, but our energy frequency changes and we again become fully, fully part of the one immortal soul without the limitations of the finite human brain. So Mark tells us also that the human brain houses the electromagnetic soul, but is not dependent on it for survival. We as humans are still part of that mass consciousness, but having a physical form limits our ability to see and communicate with the spirit world, but it's definitely possible. We simply need to learn how to shift our frequency a bit, just as spirits shift theirs. We kind of sort of meet in the middle. The truth is that because we as humans are all part of one mass consciousness, we are, God, this is so fascinating. I'm going to repeat it. The truth is that because we as humans are all part of the one mass consciousness everywhere, we are constantly touching the frequencies of other dimensions throughout our lives. You might call, or I call these moments kind of like zoning out or daydreaming. We're not completely here. We're just not aware of where we went off to. What if we decided to consciously attempt to improve our connection to the spirit world through prayer and especially through meditation? Could we indeed shift our frequency and really clearly hear messages sent to us from our loved ones, our spirit gods, the angels, and of course, our creator, God.
I believe we can. As science and technology expands and improves, many answers to mysteries like death will be uncovered. And if we think about how how much our perceptions and understanding of, say, outer space change with the invention of the telescope, we realize how much more we understand our world and other worlds beyond our Earth. I mean, way back when, people thought that stars were little openings in heaven where we were watched. And we know that's now not true. We also come to understand that the way we choose to explain things many years ago, like how the human body works or illness or even weather, it changed. We changed the way we look at that, those things um, as technology and science developed. The more we learn, the more we will truly understand and the more of the one truth of all things, everything will be revealed in time when we're ready. So I think this is a good place to end this blog. Again, I wholeheartedly recommend that you get the copy, a copy of the Afterlife Frequency by Mark Anthony. I am sure you will be inspired and you most probably will feel a resonance deep in your core. And that means, that means for me that truth is something that when we hear it, we read it, or even dream it, we simply just know that it is true. It resonates. We realize our electromagnetic soul always knows certain things to be true. We humans, on the other hand, simply forget these truths when we en enter the density of the material world. We may also lose sight of them when we try to navigate a human body that is limited by the finite perceptions and understandings of the human brain. The electromagnetic soul along with our spiritual team of light, are just waiting for us to seek guidance, assistance. And that guidance and assistance will, will we receive will lead us and our entire world to the answers we seek to even the most mysterious, mystical questions imaginable. So that's the end of the blog. And I don't have too much more to say. I wanted to just add one more thing about the age of spiritism before that happened. I mean, people have been uh, talking to, to spirits or talking to dead people, as they say, for many, many years. But before the age of spiritism, when people were, were killed for saying that they could see spirits or hear spirits, um, before that, you know, there was the period of witches where witches were burned or beheaded or, you know, so it was a real hush-hush kind of a thing and most people didn't talk about it. So that's when it really started to become uh, okay. But again, it was mostly just spiritual and science was way over on the other side. They're coming together. That is so exciting to me. So, so exciting that the spiritual things that we knew to be true, that we weren't able to bring science into it to help us explain that's happening now. And so it's super exciting. So I hope you get the book, I hope you read it, and I hope you share with me how it affected you and what you thought about it. I would really love to hear from you. And again, I am so happy to be back with all of you. And I will see you very soon. Have a terrific week. Namaste, everyone. I love you guys so much.